We've got the 2024 Volkswagen Atlas. Peak edition. Ready guys? It's got a little grunt to it. Yes, it does. And it's coming up later in our hot topic. There's a question about, you know, a turbo four cylinder engine. Is it gonna go the distance? Right now we're gonna tell you what's under the hood of this thing. A two liter turbocharged four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 269 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive in Canada, front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available in the US. You can put regular fuel in the Atlas. Now we're gonna get into all of the Atlas. We're in the peak edition. What do you get? What are the key standard features? The Atlas comes standard with a 10 and a quarter inch digital driver display, a 12 inch touch screen, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, eight way power driver seat with lumbar support, a manual passenger seat with height adjustment, heated and ventilated front seats, leather at upholstery, a heated steering wheel, power tailgate with easy open and close, and IQ drive. In the US, the power tailgate is not standard. We've got a mode button here, Andrea. Mm -hmm. You can put it in a lot of different modes, but what are we gonna put it in? You gotta put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, a couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure to like and subscribe and also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's going on behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto and the links are below the like button. So it was last summer, we drove this vehicle when it was launched for the North America launch in Upper State, New York. Mm -hmm. And we went glamping. We did go glamping. And the first night it was absolutely pouring. And the first day we got this Atlas, this time was pouring. I said to Zach, what's with the Atlas in the rain? Yeah, well, we picked a nice sunny day to do this yeah. today. But, you know, we drove the regular Atlas and then Peak Edition came out after the fact. Yeah. Are you, no, it's a year ago. Are you enjoying this one? I um, you know, some people have said, oh, I just don't find that it has enough power with the Turbo 4. I disagree with that. It is very competitive for this segment. I found passing power on the highway to be quite good. Acceleration from a stoplight is also very good. And maneuverability, excellent. I'm really shocked about how well integrated this motor is into such a large vehicle. When you drive it in the city, just commuting around, it's absolutely effortless. And you don't even know that there's a, a turbo four under the hood. It's, it's smooth and it's quiet, which is really something tricky to do on such a big vehicle. The eight speed automatic transmission does shift smoothly. It's pretty quick. The steering is very light. It's uh, not I, light. It's very, very light. It's very, very light. I gotta tell you, in the city, I'm parallel parking this thing with one hand. That is how light the steering is. I remember back in the day when I started driving, you could drive with one finger. Yeah. That's how overboosted North American cars were. But this is back to the point we make about a lot of these large utilities. It has a job to do. It's got to move kids around and stuff around and do it easily. And the steering is part of that. You sit back, you chill, and you just cruise along. And it does do the job well. So way to go, Atlas. If you're looking for a people mover that's just easy with great turning radius, you'll really like this SUV. So it was just redone and the Atlas is a large, handsome utility vehicle. It's got classic Volkswagen design elements. It's really amazing to think, Andrea, yeah. that this is based on the same platform as a Volkswagen Golf. I know. It's amazing to think, how, how do they do that? <laughs> that they just put air in it and pump it up? But uh, the looks definitely look like a Volkswagen. What's going on with this Peak Edition? Yeah, the Peak Edition is your more rugged uh, Atlas. You've got black exterior accents, silver cladding it has 18 inch wheels black wheels at that and all-terrain tires all Atlas models get a temporary spare tire and this sort of off-road looking utility is a trend we're seeing in the mid-size space whether you've got the Honda Pilot uh, the Chevrolet Traverse or others they all seem to have a, a vehicle with 18 inch wheels yeah. all-terrain tires and the wheels are often black so 
Volkswagen's following suit. And stick around for questions, coffee and cars coming up halfway through the show. We have a viewer who owns a 2019 model and wants to know about the ride quality and do the 18 inch wheels make a difference? Now, if you're looking for a sportier looking Atlas, go for the R-Line trim. It is a more chiseled front bumper with gloss black elements, R-Line badging and 21 inch wheels. Heated power folding side mirrors are available in the Atlas. The Atlas gets 6.3 inches of ground clearance and comes standard with LED headlamps, LED tail lamps, 18 inch, 20 inch or 21 inch wheels are available. So what really needed to be changed on this Atlas from the previous model was the interior. We're going to talk about it a little more in Hot Topic. It looked okay. It's when you started touching it, it wasn't very good. This one looks and feels much better. Much better. It really has a minimalistic interior design. One of my pet peeves was that the Atlas used to come with a very small screen that was standard. Well, now these screens are standards. So you've got this 12 inch touch That's screen. Big, right? Yeah. And you've got a 10 and a quarter inch digital driver display. You know, you've got leatherette upholstery, a standard available leather trimmed or perforated leather. So I think that they've done a really nice job. I did complain a lot about the plastic in the previous model. Yeah. And it's uh, when you get Get in it for the first time you're like hmm, it's very simple and clean it's similar to the id4 electric car on the inside and you know what it's it's we're going to talk more about the functionality of the radio with the swipey stuff uh, people complain about that yeah. and we get it because we have a volkswagen gti but we'll touch on that more in a moment i also really like the storage here at the center console it's a bit of a floating design you've got a lot of deep storage here the door pockets are good but one feature in the atlas which we both believe is an important feature is that a bench seat is standard on all trims. If you want captain's chairs in Canada for $700 on the two top trims, you can get that option. And in the US, it's $695, one up from the base model, you can get captain's chairs. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. We're really pushing for this in all of our reviews of three row midsize SUVs is just come standard with a bench seat and make change if you need to so applaud to Alice I always talked about Alice when it first came out I said yeah. you know there's that saying um, the last one to the dance already has learned all the dance moves, yes. right and Atlas was kind of late to the party in this class of vehicle mm -hmm. and they looked at what everybody else did first of all they said we're gonna make it big mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest we're gonna make it roomy for everybody in the inside and all those little cubbies definitely make a big difference now there are two other SUVs that offer a bench seat on all trims and that's the new Ford Explorer as well as the Honda Pilot. I also want to add that I really like this combo in here with the light gray and the dark gray and that Volkswagen carried the orange stitching all the way to the third row. Nice. All right, now we're getting into the available features in Atlas. You can get a 360 degree camera, head up display, panoramic sunroof, 30 color ambient lighting, 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, navigation, driver seat memory, a power passenger seat, and heated rear seats. We touched on it already. This is one of the biggest in the class. You get into the back seat, there is an enormous amount of legroom, plenty of headroom. Of course, the seats slide fore and aft and recline. How does it stack up? Comparing the Atlas to the Toyota Grand Highlander, they are both very similar. The Atlas offers 41.7 inches of front row legroom, which is the same as the Toyota. Second row legroom at 37.6 inches falls short by two inches to the Grand Highlander. Climbing on into the third row, the nice thing is you can leave car seats in the second row when you do get into the third row. Same thing again, one of the biggest in the class, plenty of legroom. How does this stack up? Third row legroom at 33.7 inches is about the same as the Grand Highlander. Lifting the power trunk on this model, even with all three rows of seats up, you can see just how much space there is, and underneath there's even extra storage. 
cargo space behind the third row at 20.6 cubic feet, space behind the second row at 55.5 cubic feet, and overall cargo space at 96.6 cubic feet is the same as the Grand Highlander. All right, more questions, especially about the interior. Let's get at it. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. I have a 2018. Ride quality is not the best, though. I do have the 20-inch wheels. How is the ride quality in the Peak Edition? You're working with a smaller wheel and tire, so you have more sidewall to deal with. Your first line in a suspension uh, defense against bumps and potholes is the tire, yeah. and how thick the sidewall is is going to absorb a lot. Is it still capacitive and gesture-controlled infotainment center. I think VW needs to rethink and overhaul that. Plus, I feel there is way too much piano black plastic in the dashboard. Good news and bad news. Good news is they brought out the uh, real button steering wheel, right? When we first saw this vehicle um, B-roll footage provided by Volkswagen of early production models, mm -hmm. it had the capacitive touch steering wheel. I'll mm -hmm. show you images of that now. And then when we actually got the vehicle, it's like, oh, the real switches and buttons. Apparently, this is coming for GTI for next year. Apparently. But, but the, uh, the swipey volume on the screen, that's all still there. And, and you know what, Andrea? Because we have a GTI, I got used to it. I don't like it. I, I'm just not a fan of it. I, sometimes I turn the volume down and then I put on the um, temperature goes up or goes down. Yes, you can get used to anything. We all know that. Is it a great system? I don't think so. I don't like it in our GTI either. What I do like is under the screen, there are some buttons here for climate and drive modes and they are easy enough to reach. You just go straight on the screen and then you can change your drive modes or your temperature as well. Okay, Heated uh, steering wheel, I have to say, is on the steering wheel, which yeah. is nice. That's like, makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the piano black is not too overdone. You have a strip across the dash, and then you have it here where the cup holders are. It's not our favorite. We're we're championing this change through the entire auto industry. Yeah. It's not just Volkswagen. It's all of them. Get rid of this. Enough of the piano Come black. Come up with something else. But at least it's not on the doors. No. They could have easily put it on the doors, and they've got some really nice soft touch materials in here, and a great combination of materials yeah, in the, the Atlas as well. Yeah, because the last one was what we like to call plastic. Fantastic. And now they've improved it with better materials, but yes, you're still going to get piano black. Are there any expected changes for the 2025 model year that is expected to be released in August? I'm hoping to buy it in the coming couple of months. Just don't want to miss out on any big changes. Well, <coughs> that makes sense. You wouldn't want to miss out on any big changes, but this is all new for 2024. So we don't expect any changes. There may be some exterior color options on the US site. The green color that only the Peak Edition model got uh, it sounds like Volkswagen is going to open that color up to other trims. Yeah, Volkswagen doesn't do big changes. Everything is incremental. We waited a long time to get this update. It'll be another several years before they make more changes. You even see it with the exterior. It still looks like an Atlas, doesn't it? Not a lot has changed. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Something about the two liter turbo engine hauling all that weight that doesn't seem right to me. How will these engines fare in 10 years, especially if someone is hauling anything with them? Well, Andrea, nobody really has a crystal ball to see how these engines are all going to stack up because all the manufacturers, not all of them, but most of them are switching to turbo four cylinders. It's going to be interesting to see if they can go the distance. You could look at Audi's Q7. Yeah. It was available with a turbo four for many years. I don't think many were sold, but you could look at the uh, quality and durability of that engine as a guy. Yeah, and I think a lot of people feel that the fuel economy isn't that much better with a turbo four versus is a V6 and you're right about that but manufacturers have emissions targets that they have to meet and that is the reason to go to a turbo four look if I was towing a lot I would feel more comfortable with a V6 or a diesel powertrain but if I'm just hauling people and doing just kind of regular family stuff I think I'm okay with a turbo four all right so let's get into the specs on this one the vital stats on the Atlas 
Let's start with pricing. We'll do Canada first and then move on to the U.S. The Canadian pricing includes freight, PDI, and fees. The base model starts at just over $53,000, and the top exec line, our line, is just over $63,000. In the U.S., the first all-wheel drive model starts at just under $40,000, and the top trim is just under $53,000. Here's the fuel economy for this 2-liter turbo 4-cylinder, 12.2 liters per 100 kilometer city, 9.2 on the highway. That's 19 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. The towing capacity is 5,000 pounds, and the warranty is 4 years, 80,000 kilometers, or 50,000 miles. In the United States, complimentary maintenance is covered for 2 years, or 20,000 miles. So large, 3-row utility vehicles, here's 4 that we chose. For your consideration, 4 vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Toyota Grand Highlander with a 2.4 liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. 265 horsepower and a starting price over $53,500. The Honda Pilot with a 3.5 liter V6, 285 horsepower and a starting price of $55,500. The Chevrolet Traverse with a 2.5 liter turbo four cylinder, 328 horsepower and a starting price just under $51,000. The Kia Telluride with a 3.8 liter V6, 291 horsepower and a starting price of $53,500. So there are four large three-row SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improved. I really like the updated interior. I'm shocked by how well integrated this power plant is. What I'd like to see is just less piano black, but still a big improvement from last year's model. That's what I was going to say, Andrea. So we'll just leave it there. Okay. So there it is. It's the Peak Edition Atlas. What do you think of that? Thanks for watching. And if you like what you see, subscribe. And we'll see you next time.